Wow, wow, wow. Apple has released a ton of new stuff on 420. Nice. Let's get started by talking about it. Apple Card for Family, a new podcasting app, a purple iPhone 12, AirTags, update to 4K Apple TV, a new M1 iMac, and a new iPad Pro with the M1 chip. Let's do it. Let's start with the simpler stuff. Purple iPhone 12, don't know what to say. Uh, it looks awesome. I don't know why Apple didn't include it initially, but it's here now and uh, it's available for pre-order. Apple decided that they needed to announce that their podcasting app has a brand new look. Again, not quite sure why that they needed to announce it, but uh, it'll just make me that much more infuriated to look through all of the different podcasts and find exactly what I'm looking for because my muscle memory is now completely gone. So new, new look, um, I think it looks good. It'll be interesting to see how it actually plays out. I'm hoping that it'll actually make things a little easier to find because there's a lot in that app. Apple has released their Apple Card to families, which means that uh, partners can now have the same shared card and both of them get credit. Now this is really important because previously only one person could get an Apple Card with one line of credit, meaning that if uh, two partners wanted to have uh, access to the same Apple Card, you'd actually have to have separate Apple Cards and separate lines of credit. With that being said, now Apple has completely blown that away and a family can share an Apple Card, which means uh, kids can also uh, access an Apple Card through the iOS settings that you set up. AirTags are actually pretty cool. Uh, I think that these have been rumored for a couple of years now. Basically what it is, it's a little, it's like Tile, the product, um, but it allows you to attach it to something, let's say a luggage, a purse, bag, etc., and track it. Uh, and this works through the Find My uh, application and it works uh, pretty well. You can actually go down to, I think the inches or feet uh, on this thing if you have a new iPhone 12 with the U1 chip. And this is really going to allow you to be able to find things, whether that's um, your bag, uh, backpack. Um, very interesting because Apple wants to grow their Find My network. So we've got obviously the iPhone can fit in there, Apple Watch, iPad, Mac, all of their devices thus far have been able to be found through the Find My network. Now they're adding third party uh, devices which can actually plug into this network as well. And going beyond that, they've added air tags which allow you to make something that's not smart, such as a bag, now smart and allow you to find it, which is really cool. I think that there's a lot of people who are going to find that this is super useful. Uh, they retail for $29 for a single one, or you can get four for $99. Um, I'd be interested to, to check them out. I think that on luggage, these things would be fantastic. What's really cool about them is they actually will allow people who are um, next to one to know if they're being uh, tracked essentially. So it's, it's a way to make sure that people aren't tracked inappropriately, right? So let's say that I want to know where my brother is. And so I, I put an AirTag in his pocket. Well, because he has an iPhone, if it sees that I'm away from my AirTag for an extended period of time, uh, his iPhone will actually get a notification that he has an AirTag near him. And so that will allow him to know, A, maybe I've got somebody's thing, right? So like, let's say I pick up the wrong luggage at the airport, uh, I can know that, oh, you know, it's gonna ping me after a few minutes and say, hey, you know, this doesn't belong to you. Uh, but it also makes sure that you can't be tracked uh, by accident, which is really cool. I think Apple went all out here and uh, made sure that they touched every point that would be a concern. We'll have to see. Um, I'd be interested. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see one in action and uh, we'll go ahead and grab one. Apple updated their Apple TV 4K. Uh, basically now it allows HDR content to be streamed or, uh, via AirPlay. And they also added a new uh, remote, which is really cool. Um, previously, it was kind of a pain in the butt to use. Now it's got a trackpad, kind of like uh, the old school Apple uh, iPods. It also has the swipe functionality still, and the Siri button is on the right hand side. So they've added a lot of cool features. There's a power button now, which previously there wasn't before, uh, to control your TV and other accessories. Um, so great new features there. It also now comes with the A12 chip, a big upgrade from the previous generation, uh, but still a bit of a way to go. Uh, I'm interested to see what their next generation looks like. We're starting to get into 6K, 8K footage, uh, and so I'm sure that that will also be just a couple of years away. Let's go ahead and talk about the thing that everybody is talking about at the moment, and that is the new M1 iMac. These things are, for lack of a better word, ugly. I don't know, I get where they're coming from. 
the original G3 Max had those colored shells, and I think that they looked really good if you were in kindergarten. And Apple, we're not in kindergarten anymore. Um, I'm interested to see how many people actually will take on these multicolors and put them into their homes. I think it's probably a nice color for, let's say, um, uh, uh, an elementary school class. I think it's a great color for, let's say, a family room device. I don't think it's very a pro or computery uh, color, um, but I understand, right? They're, they're matching their original colors. The original Apple logo actually had all these colors in it, and they do still have a silver iMac, but I just, the colors are throwing me off. If I were to get one, I would get the silver one. Let's actually talk about their specs though. Um, brand new M1 chip inside of this device, which is huge. It's going to make this device uh, much faster than its predecessors. Uh, it goes from a 21 inch to a 24 inch screen, and it's incredibly thin at about 11 millimeters, which is insane. Previously, you had that um, bezel on the back that would kind of curve up. Now it's just flat all the way across. Uh, but the other elephant in the room is of course the chin. The chin is actually where all the computer innards are living at the moment. Uh, no more are they on the back, which is why it can actually be so thin. However, it does distract quite a bit from that screen, which actually is white glass regardless of what color you get. Um, I love the simplicity of it all. They removed the Apple logo from the uh, front of the device and so everything does kind of look clean, but the off color uh, that they have on that chin relative to what's on the back is just kind of interesting when you pair it with a white glass surrounding the uh, edge of the screen. Um, I personally don't think I would ever own one that is colored. It's too distracting. Um, I love the vibrant colors though. They pop, I think it's really great. I just don't see it for a computer. The IO on this device is actually limited quite a bit too because probably of the size. The headphone jack is actually on the side now and not the back because the headphone that you would actually stick in, the jack itself, is too long. If it were to be on the back, it's about 14 millimeters, so they had to put it on the side. Uh, now the entry-level model only comes with two uh, USB-C ports and you can upgrade that to four if you so desire. Um, but that's about it. That's all it's got. You, they have a new power adapter, which is magnetic, which is kind of cool but it does introduce a brick farther down the cable. So you do have to have that hanging off your desk, uh, which may be a problem for some people. It's not as clean as before, but it also allows them to keep the design of the iMac itself small and thin. Um, the only saving grace of that particular choice that they made was that the ethernet cable actually can plug into the power brick directly. So there's less cables going from the floor, your wall, etc., to your computer. Um, in theory, a single one, right? So you'd have a couple USBs plugged into the back maybe, and then a single cable for power and ethernet, which is kind of cool. We'll have to see how it plays out in people's setups and if it's actually um, a beneficial choice. And last but not least, Apple decided that why not completely introduce a product that is way overkill into the market, uh, the brand new iPad Pro with the M1 chip. Now the previous iPad Pro did not need an upgrade in my opinion. I think it was incredibly performant. It had everything that it needed for most workflows. Uh, the M1 chip inside of an iPad Air is a very interesting choice. I think that this opens up a lot of possibilities for people to switch maybe from the MacBook Air to the iPad Pro because it's just as portable. You get the touch functionality uh, and now it performs probably just as well if not better uh, than the iPad Air does because it has the M1 chip, the exact same chip as their newest uh, laptops, which is crazy to me that you have a tablet that is outperforming or matching a laptop. It's a bit overkill. I don't know what kind of workflows people are going to use it for. I think maybe if you're a, a videographer, if you're a photographer, or if you uh, are maybe an engineer, that this would come in handy, or if you're an artist, right? Um, you're gonna need a lot of power to edit those photos, videos, etc. Outside of that, I'm not sure what you can do on an iPad that you would need so much power for. But I'm really interested to see what people do with it. I think that it's a huge addition to Apple's lineup. Um, again, I think it's overkill. One of the coolest features, however, that um, they introduced on this new iPad is the ability for what's called center stage. Uh, this is really, really cool, actually. It basically will follow the individuals that are in the sight of the camera. Now, again, who in the world is using cameras on an iPad? Apparently, according to Apple, a lot of people, but I personally would never do it except with this new feature. Basically, you can set the iPad up and it will track whoever is on screen and automatically shift the focus, the zoom, 
uh, panning everything to make sure that that person is center stage. And so it's actually really cool if you were streaming something, especially if you're like in a kitchen setting where you're moving around a lot, or if you're like building something, you could set it up a little bit farther away from you and it would actually continue to follow you, which I just think is really, really cool setting to have because uh, no longer do you need a cameraman, right? It's the, the poor man's version of a somewhat professional production. So I would love to see that in action. Um, I would definitely use it if I had it. Um, but again, that's probably the only reason why I would go and get uh, an iPad like this for the cameras specifically. And there you have it. That is everything or most everything that Apple announced at their 420 event. Uh, lots of things coming out in the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned if you want to see a couple of these in action. Let me know in the comments which ones are most interesting to you and if you're actually going to get any of them yourselves. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me. We'll see you next time.